Hey everyone, Adam Simmons here from DGTL Infra, short for Digital Infrastructure. 5G performance is dependent on the type of spectrum you use, but the spectrum you use is dependent on the phone you own, which supports different spectrum bands and the carrier you are with, such as AT&T, Verizon, or T-Mobile, because each carrier has access to one, different spectrum bands, and two, amounts of that spectrum, known as bandwidth, which they are making available to you. In this video, I'm going to give you a quick overview of three key types of 5G spectrum, being low, mid, and high band. Additionally, we discuss which spectrum bands can be used in the latest 5G-capable smartphones. Further, we give you a breakdown of which US wireless carrier, think Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile, has the best spectrum holdings. And finally, we discuss how this all ties in to a greater need for digital infrastructure. You will find out what the best phones and carriers are to get the most out of 5G service using real data points, as opposed to trying to figure it all out through the company's advertising campaigns. So stay tuned and I'll break this all down for you. Before I do, be sure to subscribe to the DGTL Infra channel and turn on the notifications so you don't miss my next in-depth video that is coming out soon. Now, let's jump into the video. So what is Spectrum and why is it important? Spectrum is the lifeblood of the wireless industry. In order to build a fully operational 5G network, US carriers need to have three layers of spectrum. Specifically, these include low, mid, and high band spectrum. Low band is typically the first layer of coverage, as it provides much better coverage compared to mid and high band frequencies. Low band is comprised of 4G frequencies that are re-farmed to be used in 5G through what is known as dynamic spectrum sharing. In the middle are mid-band frequencies, which are sub 6 gigahertz and include frequencies like 3.5 gigahertz, a global standard. Finally, high band spectrum bands comprise ultra wide frequencies that are typically 24 gigahertz and higher. Ultimately, all frequency bands will be part of 5G. Indeed, this means that the United States carriers will be able to leverage their full spectrum portfolio and coverage capabilities. Carriers will have to combine their low, mid, and high band spectrum in order to deliver users the performance that they expect, whether that be for video streaming or advanced enterprise use cases. So United States carriers are deploying 5G spectrum in what is known as a layer cake. The combined channels of low, mid, and high band spectrum together combine to what is known as a layer cake. Specifically, the layer cake is critical for the type of 5G services that customers can use on a ubiquitous basis nationwide in urban, suburban, and rural environments. Indeed, it is this combination of low, mid, and high band spectrum that enables more capacity and an increase in speeds for customers. For nationwide coverage of the United States, the only way for carriers to implement 5G is through the layer cake approach to spectrum. Firstly, low band covers broad geographies and penetrates buildings very well. Secondly, the populous areas use mid band. And thirdly, when it becomes very dense, high band, or what is known as millimeter wave, also in short form is MM wave, this type of spectrum covers areas such as inside stadiums and at event locations. So now that we understand the different layers of spectrum, what can 5G spectrum and performance do for you? The 5G performance that you receive depends a lot on what signal or spectrum your 5G phone runs on. Recall that there are three categories of spectrum bands, high band, mid band, and low band. Higher frequency bands are characterized by signals that have higher capacity, meaning a higher amount of traffic or data can be transmitted over them. But the downside is that these signals travel shorter distances. Lower frequency bands are characterized by signals that have lower capacity, meaning a lower amount of traffic or data can be transmitted over them. But the upside is that these signals travel longer distances and therefore provide more coverage. So let's walk through now five examples of major phones that have come out over the past years to show you their compatibility with different frequencies used in 5G. 
So first is the Apple iPhone, and within that we have the iPhone 12, which has just been released and is compatible across the three different spectrum bands. So the iPhone 12 is compatible with low band spectrum, including 600 megahertz, 700 megahertz, and 850 megahertz frequencies. The iPhone 12 is also compatible with mid-band spectrum, which we'll call old mid-band spectrum, because it was used in 4G and LTE. This includes AWS, which is 1.7 GHz, PCS, which is 1.9 GHz, and BRS, which is 2.5 GHz. The iPhone 12 is also compatible with what we'll call new mid-band spectrum, meaning this spectrum has either recently been released, such as CBRS, or is going to be released by the end of 2020 and into 2021, such as C-Band. So the iPhone 12 is compatible with new mid-band spectrum, including C-Band, which is 3.5 GHz, and CBRS, which is 3.5 GHz. Finally, the iPhone 12 is also compatible with high-band spectrum, including both 28 GHz and 39 GHz. Moving over to the iPhone 11, which was released prior to any 5G services going nationwide, we can see that the iPhone 11 is compatible with the same low band spectrum, such as 600 MHz, 700 MHz, and 850 MHz frequencies. It is also compatible with the old mid band spectrum, including AWS, PCS, and BRS but it is not compatible with new mid-band spectrum, such as CBRS and C-band, and it does not have capabilities for high-band spectrum. The iPhone X or iPhone 10 is compatible with the same spectrum bands as the iPhone 11. So let's move on to some Samsung Galaxy devices. The latest edition of the Samsung Galaxy is the Samsung Galaxy S20, which is compatible with low-band spectrum, including 600 megahertz, 700 megahertz, and 850 megahertz frequencies. It is compatible with the old mid-band spectrum, including AWS at 1.7 gigahertz, PCS at 1.9 gigahertz, and BRS at 2.5 gigahertz. It is also compatible with some of the new mid-band spectrum, specifically being CBRS at 3.5 gigahertz, but the device is not compatible with C-band, which is another 3.5 gigahertz spectrum. Finally, the base Samsung Galaxy S20 model is not compatible with high band spectrum. You need to, for example, get the Samsung Galaxy S20 UW, which stands for ultra wideband and uses that high band millimeter wave frequency. Finally, moving furthest to the right, the Samsung Galaxy S10 is compatible with the same spectrum bands as the S20, except it is not compatible with CBRS at 3.5 GHz. Therefore, it is not compatible with the new mid-band spectrum in its entirety. So we discussed how 5G is deployed in layers and different spectrum bands. But what does this all mean for you? And how can we interpret the performance? So high band you can think of as capacity spectrum. It typically ranges from 24 gigahertz to 40 gigahertz. If we look at the three distinct triangles in the middle of the page, it helps to compare the three different layers of spectrum to one another. So starting with high band on the left side, coverage in high band is more limited. Millimeter wave spectrum has limited propagation given it does not travel much more than 500 to 600 feet away from the small cell that it is being broadcast on. However, as we move to the next triangle, capacity, high band can offer speeds that are 10 times faster or more than low band 5G networks. In terms of this capacity, you're able to transmit a lot of information and thus high band is used for those extreme bandwidth needs in dense urban areas. The trade-off as we talked about with coverage is that high band does not travel very far because the signal gets easily absorbed or scattered by obstacles. So even if you are standing close to the node where the signal is being broadcast from, such as only a few hundred feet away, there can be some degradation because high band signals only travel well within direct line of sight. So obstacles like trees, walls, buildings, and even raindrops in the air can block or disrupt the high frequency signal. Finally, moving to the rightmost triangle, latency on high band is very, very low, particularly when compared to mid band and low band. Now, moving to mid band, which is known as the backbone spectrum, and includes frequencies like 3.5 GHz. 
Looking at the first two triangles, mid-band is really a mixture of coverage and capacity for 5G services, meaning fast speeds and good transmission distances. Mid-band works well in cities, but is not as effective for rural coverage. Mid-band is important for providing wider bandwidth for things like enhanced mobile broadband services and to support Internet of Things use cases. Moving to the third triangle, the latency of mid-band is lower compared to low-band spectrum, but it is higher compared to high-band spectrum. Finally, low-band, which is known as coverage spectrum, includes frequencies such as 600 MHz, 700 MHz, and 850 MHz signals, which are the foundation for the 5G network. In low band, if we refer to the first triangle, the coverage of low band can be described as signals being able to penetrate walls in a similar way in which light goes through glass. It provides better coverage in buildings and provides the widest coverage in general. Moving to capacity, compared to 4G, low band provides higher speeds for 5G mobile broadband coverage across urban, suburban, and rural areas, but it's much slower in comparison to mid band and high band 5G. The final triangle, latency, for low band is much higher compared to mid and high band frequencies. Now to sum up all three of those 5G bands and compare them to a reference point, which is 4G, 4G was deployed on existing 2G and 3G spectrum bands, primarily 1.8 GHz, but in some cases 700 MHz, 800 MHz, 900 MHz, and 2.1 GHz. So now that we know the differences in features between the different spectrum bands, let's move on to the spectrum that is held by the different carriers in the United States. So the four largest holders of spectrum in the United States include Verizon, AT&T, T-Mobile US, and Dish Network, which owns Boost Mobile and is building a new 5G network. Companies like US Cellular, Comcast, Sirius XM, Charter, and Cox also own Spectrum, but their holdings are much smaller than these big four carriers. Therefore, we will focus on a high-level overview of the low, mid, and high-band holdings of Verizon, AT&T, T-Mobile US, and Dish Network. To reiterate, this is a high-level overview. If you want more detail of each carrier's precise Spectrum holdings by individual band, then please check out our shop section at dgtlinfra.com slash shop and look for the product United States Carriers Spectrum Holdings. In this document, it provides you with the raw data. For example, that T-Mobile owns a 31 MHz block of Spectrum in the 600 MHz band. But now let's focus on our high-level overview of the low, mid, and high-band holdings of Verizon, AT&T, T-Mobile US, and Dish Network. Just to note, when we quote Spectrum Holdings, we are referring to the weighted average holdings in megahertz. So Verizon is the largest carrier in the United States with 120 million subscribers. They are the third out of these four carriers in low-band holdings, they are the fourth out of these four carriers in mid-band holdings, and they are number one out of these four carriers in high-band holdings. So in low-band, Verizon holds 47 MHz of spectrum depth. In mid-band, Verizon holds 84 MHz of spectrum depth. And in high-band, Verizon holds over 2,000 MHz of spectrum depth. Moving to AT&T, they are number one out of these four carriers in terms of low band holdings. They are number two out of these four carriers in terms of mid band holdings. And they are number three out of these four carriers in terms of high band holdings. So in low band, AT&T holds 55 megahertz of spectrum depth. In mid band, AT&T holds 93 megahertz of spectrum depth. And in high band, AT&T holds approximately 1200 MHz of spectrum depth. Moving to T-Mobile, they are number two out of these four carriers in terms of low band spectrum. They are number one out of these four carriers in terms of mid band spectrum. And they are number two out of these four carriers in high band spectrum. So in low band, T-Mobile holds 55 MHz of spectrum depth. In mid-band, T-Mobile holds 256 MHz of spectrum depth. 
and in high band, T-Mobile holds over 1500 megahertz of spectrum depth. Finally, moving to DISH Network, and they are number four out of these four carriers in terms of low band holdings. They are number three out of these four carriers in terms of mid band holdings. And they are number four out of these four carriers in terms of high band holdings. In low band, DISH holds 24 megahertz of spectrum depth. In mid band, DISH holds 91 megahertz of spectrum depth. And in high band, DISH holds over 1,100 megahertz of spectrum depth. So from these numbers, we can see that Verizon holds the most high band spectrum. AT&T holds the most low band spectrum, albeit T-Mobile is about the same. And T-Mobile holds the most mid band spectrum by a significant lead. But what do all these numbers mean in terms of takeaways for the carriers? So I'll highlight a few implications for each of the carriers based on their spectrum holdings for you now. So Verizon has the strongest position in high band spectrum, but it is worth noting that high band spectrum is not readily used today as it is still a nascent technology that will develop further over the next five to 10 years. Remember as we talked about that it does not have good propagation characteristics, meaning it does not travel very far to the user's phone. On the flip side, Verizon has the weakest spectrum holdings of the combined low and mid-band spectrum, which is collectively known as sub-6 GHz spectrum, as compared to both AT&T and T-Mobile. However, Verizon will be buying significantly more mid-band spectrum, specifically C-band spectrum, in the C-band auction, which is taking place right now in December 2020. Moving to AT&T, AT&T has the weakest spectrum holdings overall as compared to Verizon and T-Mobile. Additionally, because Verizon will have more mid-band spectrum than AT&T following the C-band spectrum auction, it puts even more pressure on AT&T. And further, AT&T currently has the lowest amount of high-band spectrum holdings as compared to both Verizon and T-Mobile. Finally, AT&T as a company has a significant amount of debt and other declining business lines such as video services through DirecTV, which makes it difficult for them to even buy more Spectrum licenses in the future. Moving to T-Mobile, they have the strongest Spectrum holdings overall, as compared to all US carriers. T-Mobile has the second highest amount of low band spectrum, which is basically the same number as AT&T, and is far and away the leader in mid-band spectrum, with 256 megahertz of spectrum depth, which is approximately three times the holdings of both Verizon and AT&T. Indeed, T-Mobile also has the second highest amount of high band spectrum. Overall, T-Mobile has a well-rounded spectrum portfolio fitting that layer cake that we spoke about earlier. Finally, moving to DISH Network. At face value, DISH may seem to have low spectrum holdings compared to Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile. However, the company is in a strong position relative to its 5G network built. Firstly, DISH owns Boost Mobile, which has a subscriber base of only 9 million, which is less than 10% of the subscriber base of the big three carriers. Specifically, this compares to Verizon at 120 million subscribers, AT&T at 94 million subscribers, and T-Mobile at 100 million subscribers. Therefore, DISH is in a strong position on a spectrum per subscriber basis. Secondly, DISH intends to build a real 5G network, which will be powered by 50,000 tower sites. DISH estimates that it will cost $10 billion to build out its Greenfield 5G wireless network. Thirdly, DISH has a seven-year mobile virtual network operator known as MVNO agreement on the T-Mobile network, which allows DISH's wireless customers to roam on T-Mobile's network for the next seven years before DISH even has to start using its large spectrum holdings. So as it relates to learning more about the four major wireless carriers we talked about, if you are serious about wanting to get detailed background about the 5G plans of Verizon, AT&T, T-Mobile, and Dish Network, then I would recommend checking out our ebook titled The Geniuses of 5G, 
We have linked to it in the description below, and you can grab your copy at dgtlinfra.com slash shop. This ebook gives you access to the ultimate behind the scenes look at the 5G industry. Specifically, you will be able to unlock the most valuable stories, secrets, and case studies directly from 10 of the most successful 5G corporate executives and industry leaders, including the current and former CEOs of Verizon, AT&T, T-Mobile, and Dish Network. Finally, it would not be DGTL Infra without talking about how this all ties into digital infrastructure. Recall that the four sectors of digital infrastructure include towers, data centers, fiber, and the combination of small cells and distributed antenna systems. Generally speaking, towers are used to broadcast the frequencies for low band and mid band spectrum. In suburban and rural areas, larger antennas will be placed higher up on towers to deploy this low and mid band spectrum. Typically, the lower the spectrum band, the larger the antennas will be on the tower. Additionally, when antennas are brought from a high point to a low point, it reduces the size of the coverage area, which brings us to small cells. So small cells are another piece of digital infrastructure, which are used to broadcast the frequencies for high band spectrum. Small cells are located in dense urban areas where high band spectrum is applicable. Smaller antennas placed at lower heights are used to deploy high band or millimeter wave spectrum through these small cells. These small cells are placed on city infrastructure like streetlights, utility poles, and the sides of buildings. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, then please share it with somebody you think might also find it helpful. And consider subscribing to DGTL Infra and visit us at dgtlinfra.com for more of the latest news on digital infrastructure. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to like the video and post in the comments telling me which smartphone and wireless carrier you are using for 5G services. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.